everyone. My name is Candy Mills. Um, I am an athletic trainer at Mayo Clinic um, in our orthopedic and sports medicine um, area. And I am here to talk to you about the career of athletic training. Bear with me. Um, first off, what is an athletic trainer? Um, an, an athletic trainer is concerned with and responsible for overseeing the total health, health care and well-being of an athlete. Um, they are a specialist in preventing and managing athletic injuries. And the athletic trainer is a major link between the sports professional and medical community. What are, what are some things um, that an athletic trainer um, is responsible for? What, what role do they have um, with athletes? Um, they're there to help prevent athletic injuries. Um, they are there to help recognize, evaluate, and provide immediate care for injuries that occur. Um, also on the opposite side, they're not just there to prevent, but to rehab and recondition injuries, get the, the players ready to go back on the field or on the court. Um, and then of course, there's the healthcare administration side of things, um, keeping the information confidential, documenting the injuries, and then professional development, uh, going um, to yearly classes, maintaining the continuing education units or CEUs, um, and just staying up on the latest and greatest of, uh, of the career of athletic training. A few pictures here, um, just wanted to show you kind of some typical things that an athletic trainer might do in the training room. Um, the upper left is just an ankle tape job. Uh, upper right, we're doing some ankle strengthening, uh, an ankle rehab program. Uh, the bottom left is, is a machine called the Alter G. Um, if someone isn't quite ready for weight bearing or running, we would put them in this um, bubble, if you will. It fills up with air. Um, and kind of takes off uh, the weight so they can they can return to walk or return to run a little bit sooner um, than usual. The bottom right um, is just some performance equipment. There's a, a ladder, a speed hurdle, um, some weighted balls, some TheraBand, those stretchy rubber bands, that red and blue, um, and then that Dyna disc is that blue um, circular shaped flat ball, if you will, um, on the right hand side. All of those um, are just really to help the athlete kind of go above and beyond or get back to um, rehab or, or, you know, just even get better faster without an injury. Um, and then that picture in the middle um, is just someone on, on a, a dense foam pad, and that's just to help with balance training. Uh, some other things that an athletic trainer might do, uh, we call these modalities. Uh, the top left is, is ultrasound. Um, just through sound waves, we can help uh, decrease inflammation. Uh, the bottom right is a hydroculator. Um, so some just heating pads um, to apply maybe before practice or competition to kind of help uh, stimulate the blood flow. Uh, the picture in the middle is called electric stimulation or e-stim. Um, we will oftentimes do that after a treatment or after an injury to help um, decrease the swelling. Uh, top right hand is what we call game ready. It's just this kind of handheld um, icing unit um, that helps instead of just putting an ice pack on on the area. Um, it this um, the let's see here that um, that sleeve right there fills up with cold air and it just gives more of a a, a broad area ice. Um, and then of course the bottom right hand is is every athlete's dream is is the slush bucket. So if we need to cover a wider area um, to ice instead of you know 10 ice bags, uh, we'll put them in an ice bucket. Um, my journey, um, how did I get where, where I am today? Um, it all started when I had a knee injury in high school um, and just going through the rehab process let me, led me to searching uh, and finding the career of athletic training. I went to South Dakota State uh, for four years and got my Bachelor of Science degree in athletic training. Um, in 2002, I received my national certification, uh, saying that I was officially able to practice um, as an athletic trainer. Um, I stayed on at SDSU for another two years and received a, a master's of science uh, in exercise science. Um, when I graduated, there wasn't really anything in the way of jobs. Um, so I was a personal trainer at a local health club for a year um, while I kept my eyes open. 
um, let's see. Uh, in that time frame, let me move my my mug out of the way. Um, I also received a strength and conditioning certification uh, from the National Strength and Conditioning Association in 2004. Um, not only did that help me with my personal training, but I thought that that would help me, um, you know, land a job when when one came open for athletic training. Um, I volunteered at RCTC, so Rochester Community and Technical College. Um, in the training room, um, three to four afternoons per week. I did this for four months uh, just to get to know the people on staff um, and, you know, ask many, many questions and, and hopefully get my foot in the door with Mayo Clinic. Um, sure enough, um, I was able to get a supplemental athletic trainer position at Mayo Clinic Park Med. Um, I had that job for four months and then, yay. Um, I was given a full-time athletic trainer position at Mayo Clinic Sports Med, um, which I've been there since. I've been there 15 and a half, 15 plus years. Um, from that time frame, um, I've really held every position there except a supervisor. Um, I, I did some outreach, meaning I went to outer line schools a couple times a week and then I covered athletic events. Um, I did that for three years. Um, uh, progressed or got promoted, if you will, to clinic full time, where I was a physician extender, and we'll learn a little bit more about what that is in, in a few slides. Um, also covered some events. Um, I did that for six years, um, and then the the position I currently hold hold right now. I'm in clinic, but I work with our regenerative medicine and advanced procedure practice, um, and I've been doing that for six years. And in a couple slides, I'll explain. Um, what that is as well. Okay, trainer. You hear um, the word trainer, what does it mean? There's two types of trainer. There's an athletic trainer. Um, as I kind of mentioned before, this is um, a person who's an expert at recognizing, treating, and preventing musculoskeletal injuries. Um, we are nationally certified um, and then also adhere to requirements of state licensing. So every year I have to reapply um, to keep my licensure. The other trainer is a personal trainer, um, not any less important, um, but just a different role. They develop, monitor, um, and change an individual's specific exercise program. Uh, they typically work in health clubs, wellness centers, other locations where fitness activities take place. Um, and here you may or may not be certified. Um, when I was a personal trainer, I was not a certified personal trainer. Um, I was a certified athletic trainer, but that um, certainly made me qualified to be a personal trainer. It was just a little bit different than, than what I went to school for. All right, um, which school should you go to? Um, where I always point students um, to a couple websites here, nata, nata.org and katie.net. Um, things to look at, um, find the school that's right for you. How do you do that? Um, first and foremost, uh, you want to find an accredited program. Um, if you're not accredited, you can't get your national certification. Um, size of school, do you want a small school? Do you want a big school? And how about geography? Do you want one close to home? Do you want to go near and far, um, kind of get away from the house? Um, also, um, there's a two-year versus a three-year program. Now, all these programs do require you to have a bachelor's, pro, a bachelor's degree, um, but some programs kind of um, combined it into a master's program as well. Um, and so that's that three year program. So it just really depends on what your goals are and what you're looking for and where you're looking for. Um, but the other thing within the programs that I want to point out for sure is your contact hours. Um, when I graduated, I had well over a thousand hours of contact, meaning I had put in a thousand hours um, working with athletes um, as, as um, experience. All right, so you have to apply to a program. What are the entry requirements? Um, you know, the, whether you're in high school, whether you're in college, um, all these areas are just really um, important that you have some sort of working knowledge um, of before you apply to a program. If you haven't taken any of these, you're probably not gonna get in. And then of course, observation. Um, anytime you can shadow at a PT clinic, um, an athletic trainer, um, at a high school, at a college, those are all going to be pluses. Unfortunately, 
COVID um, times right now are making it really hard for any observations. I know at Mayo Clinic right now, we're not allowing any outside observations um, unless you're within like the Mayo Medical School. Um, so kind of put the damper on, on the possibilities at this point, but just know that observation is key and really just making your face, um, getting your face out there in the community and, and networking. Okay, based on 2020, here it is, national ad, nationwide average uh, of an athletic trainer salary, um, about $47,500. Um, one thing I always stress to students is you, don't, you do not get into athletic training for the money, you do it for the passion, and do it because it's a very satisfying job, you don't do it for the money. Um, now, average or the, the um, salary is dependent on the work setting, um, you may work, uh, you may make more if you work in the clinic um, at a college or a professional level. Um, you may make not as much if you're working in an outreach, a small school, um, a high school setting. Of course, the level of education. Now at Mayo Clinic, you have to have a master's degree to work in the clinic. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of places are going that route, um, but certainly that's not, um, not every place. Um, so again, if you just have a bachelor's, you may not be making as much as someone who has a master's degree. Um, years of experience, um, you know, I have 15 plus years of experience. I'm probably making more than someone who only has five years of experience. It's just the way it goes. Um, and then of course, demographic location. I can tell you um, that people on the coast um, or athletic trainers on the coast are probably making more money than um, people in the Midwest. Um, all right, how do you gain experience? I talked about ob, um, observation a couple slides ago. Um, how, do you, how do you observe, how do you gain that, that knowledge um, and to figure out, hey, is this really something I wanna do or is it just sound cool on paper? Um, again, whether in high school or college, find an athletic trainer. Um, locally, RCTC is a great, um, a great resource. Greg out there is wonderful. Um, or other college or university, um, athletic trainers are quite, quite common um, in the athletic setting. So it's just a matter of getting, you know, working through the barriers and getting to that individual. Um, high schools, I can tell you the four high schools here in Rochester um, all have an athletic trainer full-time. And I think 12 to 14 of the smaller outer line schools have an athletic trainer most days of the week. Um, Mentorships, internships, right now they're being, you know, kind of put on hold because of COVID, um, but these are also opportunities in the summer, typically. Um, I know Winona State, they do have an, uh, a mentorship or an internship program um, that they co-op with and, um, Mayo Clinic Sports Med. So some schools have it built in the program, um, some career days, um, these student workshops, um, again, it's just all reaching out to that high school athletic trainer or the college athletic trainer and seeing what's available um, in your area or at your school. All right, uh, settings versus a typical day. Um, in a college or high school, the hours are dependent on the activity uh, during the school year. Um, part And to kind of go back a couple slides, part of that salary um, is based on some people have nine-month contracts, some people have 12-month contracts. So, um, that can also sway that, that salary. Um, but anyway, hours dependent on the activity during the school year. Do you get the summer off? Do you have the summer off? Um, I can tell you it's very common to work 60, 70 hours a week during the fall on a normal fall um, and not work as much during the spring. So it, it can be very different depending on the sports that are going as well. Um, outreach, that's where you're going to those smaller schools, visiting them during the school day. Um, and again, to supplement that time, I had to cover events um, because you could only spend so much time with kids during the school day um, and it didn't equal 40 hours. So a lot of times my nights and weekends were consumed. Uh, and then here's where I'm at now, the clinic physician extender. The nice thing I always tell people, it's very climate controlled. Um, typically it's the eight to five weekdays. I don't really work weekends and nights anymore unless it's an emergency basis. Um, but it, it's it's very um, it, it varies depending on the physician that I'm working with. Um, what what are the tasks at hand during the day? Very rarely do I get a full lunch break, so it's very densely packed in the eight to five. Um, but I know that my nights are are and weekends. Are 
Um, and then, then we have professional sports. Um, the days off are very limited. I say this every time I talk to a class or, or a group. Um, I had a colleague that came from um, the Redskins, the, the previous uh, Redskins, um, and he had talked about having two days off the entire year. So um, for him to move to, um, you know, in a high school setting was really, really great for him because he got more time off. Um, I alluded a little bit on the previous slide what my typical day is. Um, I work with a primary physician, or a, I primarily work with one physician. Um, I, I do help uh, or I assist other physicians as needed, but I have one physician that, that I work with. Um, we do ultrasound guided injections, um, or he, I should say my physician does the injections. I, I help, I assist and keep everything sterile and um, push buttons on the machine and make sure that the images are sent um, to the medical record. We have advanced procedures um, that once used to be in a surgical setting are now done um, with a needle and an ultrasound machine. Um, I do blood draws and the processing of platelet-rich plasma. So the blood draw goes in a special centrifuge and we can collect the platelets um, and, and get injected into a tendinopathic tendon um, or into a joint for osteoarthritis. Um, again, my physician does the injection, but I get, get everything prepped for him. Um, we also um, withdraw our harvest bone marrow. Um, I will process that bone marrow aspirate concentrate, that's what BMAC is, um, in a centrifuge, and then we can inject the, the cells, if you will, um, into a joint or into, into that kind of disease tendon. Um, I also perform aftercare or emergency therapy. Um, so it really is dependent on what my physician needs me to do that day, what kind of patients we have. Um, it could be maybe I just go in and take a history and, and do an examination. Um, so it's highly variable depending on our, our population or what our patient load is for the day. Um, one other thing I get to do um, is research. I'm involved in a couple research studies. Um, and so I don't necessarily recruit the patients, but when the patients are there that day, I take care of them and I will do vitals um, and make sure they have the appropriate appointment set up for the future. Um, and then administration. So we have a lot of paperwork, a lot of documenting that we need to do, and sometimes it always doesn't it doesn't always get done the exact appointment. And so um, you know you have to play catch up, fill out disability forms, um, just really any paperwork um, that uh, that's needed that didn't get done that day. Um, and I alluded to my days are typically eight to five, um, but my lunches vary. Sometimes it literally is I get about a fifteen minute lunch. Other times I may get a full lunch, sometimes I'm at a meeting, um, but I know that around 5, 5.15, 5.30, I get to go home for the day. So it, it is pretty stable. All right, and that is, uh, is it in a nutshell. Um, I would normally open it up for questions, but uh, you're not here <laughs> and I'm not there. Um, so feel free to email me. Um, I usually, I, I very typically respond within 24 to 48 hours. Um, but any sort of questions that you may have, um, I'm, I'm certainly happy to yield those questions. Thank you for your time.